Hey, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. I know it's been a very long time since I posted, and for that I'm sorry. Um, I am excited though that soon I'm going to have some very big news to give you that I think Carl, my Uncle Carl, would be really proud of. And I'm also about to graduate Pepperdine, so I'm hoping that we'll free up a little more time and I can really get back in the swing of things and make videos more regularly. Um, last year I did a series of videos that I really enjoyed. They were 10 facts about a movie, a person, that kind of thing. Um, and I know I already did 10 facts about Frankenstein, but I just saw the movie again recently and I kind of can't get enough of it, so I decided to do 10 more facts about Frankenstein. And I'll get a little more random this time and a little more obscure. Here we go. This was not the first Frankenstein film made. Edison Studios in 1910 made a 16 minute version of the film, but it seems to have gone out of its way to be pretty tame. It's nothing like the shock and the horror that we know from Lemley's Frankenstein. And that version of the film was actually considered to be lost until the 1970s. There were also two other movies. There, were, there was Life Without Soul and The Monster of Frankenstein, but I don't think there are surviving copies of either of those. This is the first movie to use the Castle Thunder sound effects. This one. <laughs> it was recorded specifically for this movie, but has been used in countless cartoons and movies and commercials, everything since. Um, it really just sets the tone. It's basically a cliche at this point, but it was all started thanks to Frankenstein. The electrical equipment in the film was designed by Kenneth Strickfaden, and it's really quite impressive. Um, he started out doing electrical work just as a hobby, but he really ended up designing an era. Um, I know he took inspiration from Tesla, but he really tried to keep in mind how things were going to look on screen. And um, yeah, I mean, he just really invented you know, like when you picture a, a mad scientist in a lab and the electrical stuff, that was all invented by Kenneth Strickfaden for Frankenstein. And speaking of electricity, a lot of people refer to the things on the monster's neck as bolts, but they are actually electrodes. The book was written by Mary Shelley as part of a writing contest. Um, she certainly wasn't hanging out with nobodies. On a particularly dreary summer away with poets Percy Shelley, Lord Byron, um, the writer John William Polidori, who uh, some credit with writing the modern day vampire story. They're, they're on a summer away together, very dreary, very boring. So they decide to combat that by challenging each other to write the best horror story and Mary Shelley clearly won. And what started as a short story was really fleshed out over the years to become the masterpiece we know today. The screen rights were bought from Webling and Balderston for $20,000. Peggy Webling wrote a Frankenstein play that, from what I read, wasn't so great, but did bring the monster to life in an amazing way. John Balderston further adapted that in from what I can tell, wasn't ever an actually produced play, but that's what Universal bought the rights to. So from what I hear, they got $20,000, and some accounts also say they may have gotten 1% of the gross earnings. Supposedly, Peggy Webling was the very first to refer to uh, the monster himself as Frankenstein. And it is so controversial these days. If you call him Frankenstein, the monster, the creature, he, it, whatever. I get in trouble all the time in my videos for calling him Frankenstein. But that's what Peggy Webling did and, and the world kind of followed suit. And Universal as well called the monster Frankenstein. 
So yeah, I mean, I use the terms pretty interchangeably because I know the history, I, I see the shift, and I know that people are gonna know what I'm talking about regardless, but it is a really big deal to some people. So blame Peggy. Filming went five days over schedule, which is actually quite good compared to some films these days. The monster appeared on two postage stamps, one in 1997 and one in 2002. The first stamp is just kind of a typical promotional shot of Boris Karloff as Frankenstein. And the second one is um, actually taken from a shot of Boris in makeup with Jack Pierce. Here's the original picture. Original posters for this movie are worth hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of dollars. On TLC's Hunt for Amazing Treasures, they said there's only one known six sheet in existence and it's probably worth about two to three million dollars. And earlier this year, an old three sheet poster was found in an abandoned theater and sold at auction for $358,500. And there's only a few of those known to exist in the world. Um, God, it would just be such a dream to own something so cool. Anyway, leave any questions or comments below. Um, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Antonia Carlotta. Please subscribe. There's a button here. There's a button below. There's a button at the beginning of the video. Just click one of those buttons to subscribe. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.